The Apple event is here and we will do a quick rundown of what was announced. Stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome to Power Up. If this is your first time here and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech news, reviews and comparisons, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. We are getting so close to that 500 subscriber mark. It would be really epic if we could get there together. Only 14 to go. So if you haven't done it yet, hit subscribe now. And we will have a little giveaway as a thank you when we get there. More info on that soon. So today I'm gonna to try and keep it relevant and go through the main highlights of what was announced at the Apple event. So let's just jump straight into the Apple event, starting with the new iPhone 12 color, purple. This was something I really didn't expect, but I think makes a great addition to the lineup. It is only available for the iPhone 12s and not the iPhone 12 Pros. Pre-orders start on Friday and it's available on April 30th. Moving on to the iMac. The iMac has had quite a significant redesign, which was made possible because of the M1 chip. This really is a good looking machine. The design, the colors, they're just very impressive. There are seven colors to choose from, green, yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, and silver. So on the previous iMac, the logic board and the thermals were huge. The logic board needed to hold several components separately in different spaces, but the M1 chip combines them all efficiently into a smaller space. This means that the logic board can now become smaller, and with M1's power efficiency, Two small fans can be added to the end of the same logic board, saving even more space, giving Apple more freedom with the design. The iMac is just 11.5 millimeters thin. The display is 24 inches and is a 4.5K Retina display. It has 11.3 million pixels and a resolution of 4480 by 2520, along with a brightness of 500 nits. The camera is now 1080p and has been improved in low light situations. The iMac uses a three mic array that are better at ignoring the background noises, making you sound clearer. And the speaker system was also improved with a six speaker system. Spatial audio is also supported when watching videos with Dolby Atmos. The iMac has a faster CPU up to 85% faster and a GPU up to 50% faster than the previous 21.5 inch iMac. It has four USB-C ports, two of which are Thunderbolt ports. There's a new magnetic power cable that's two meters long and has a power adapter that allows you to plug in your ethernet cable directly. This is a nice touch to keep the cables away from the iMac, keeping that clean look. There are also new keyboards, mice, and trackpads. One of the keyboards has a lock key and the other one has a key for Touch ID. The third is a keyboard that includes a Touch ID key as well as a numeric pad. The mice and trackpads now come in different colors, which you could match with the iMac's color, or you could choose to pick a different color. On another note though, I do have a magic mouse and I don't really like it. Now I've got to say that it's one of the least ergonomic mice I've ever used. It does allow you to do some great gestures and has a very clean look, but something really needs to be done about that shape. The starting price of the iMac is $1,299. This comes with an eight core CPU, seven core GPU, and two Thunderbolt ports. This is only available in four colors. At $1,499, you get a choice of all seven colors, and that comes with an eight core CPU, eight core GPU, and four USB-C ports, two of which are Thunderbolt. The new iMacs are available to be ordered from April 30th and will become available in the second half of May. Next up, we have the iPad Pro. The big news here is that it also comes with the M1 chip. Its eight core CPU makes it 50% faster than the previous iPad Pro, and its eight core GPU gives 40% faster graphics performance. One big thing for me is that you can now use the PS5 or the Xbox Series X controllers to play games on the iPad Pro. Now this might actually get me to try games that I normally wouldn't on the iPad. They go on to say that the iPad has an all day battery life, 
which in the real world equates to around 10 hours of use. The maximum storage space has now doubled and is at a massive 2 terabytes. Now I'd say I was a fairly casual iPad user and I've almost used 100 gigabytes of my 1 terabyte storage. I really don't think that the 2 terabyte option is needed by most people, but hey, why not? The USB-C port is now becoming Thunderbolt 2, which will make data transfer so much faster when connected to your Mac. You can now also connect it up to 6K external displays. 5G has been added as well, with millimeter wave in the US only. Millimeter wave is the faster version of 5G that I spoke about in a previous video, which I'll link to up here. The front-facing camera has had an upgrade with a new 12 megapixel ultra-wide camera. It has a 122 degree field of view, which has led to something called center stage. This allows the iPad to always keep the subject in the center of the view. This is actually very cool, especially when on video calls. Unless, of course, you're trying to get out of view to blow your nose or something and forget that it can still see you. It can also zoom in and out to keep all subjects in the frame. The 11-inch iPad Pro displays 4 million pixels. The 12.9-inch model has a liquid Retina XDR display with 1000 nits of brightness, 1600 nits of peak brightness, and displays 5.6 million pixels. The contrast ratio is 1 million to 1. To achieve that level of brightness, mini LED displays are now being used, with over 10,000 mini LEDs across the entire display. Just to compare, the previous iPad Pro had 72 LEDs. This really is impressive when the iPad is only 6.4 millimeters thin. The 11 inch iPad Pro starts at $799, and the 12.9 inch model starts at $1,099. Do note that the 11-inch iPad Pro doesn't have the liquid Retina XDR display. These will be available to order from April 30th, and like the iMac, these will be available in the second half of May. So AirTags, they're finally here. These are little tags that you can attach to pretty much anything. Your backpack, handbag, car keys, wallet, purse, or anything else that you have of value. These can be located using the Find My iPhone app called Find My. The AirTags can also be personalized with alphanumeric characters or emojis. One AirTag would cost you $29, whereas a pack of four costs $99. These can be ordered from Friday 23rd of April and will be available from April 30th. There was also an improvement to Apple Card. All holders of an Apple credit card will now be able to build credit history rather than just the holder. So those with good credit can have that shared with the other users of the card. This can be used by all family members over 13 years old. There will be additional controls and spending limits for kids. These family editions are called Apple Card Family. A very quick update on Apple Podcasts. The app has been redesigned along with the option to subscribe. This will give you access to new content, no ads, and will launch in 170 regions next month. And finally, Apple TV has been updated to include the A12 Bionic chip. There is a new color balance feature which uses sensors on the iPhone to detect the colors on the TV, and that compares the TV's color balance to the industry standards. The Apple TV would then determine what the best picture is and make those adjustments automatically. There is also a new remote, adding a new circular gesture to the outer ring, making it easier to scan through media to find that scene that you're after. The 32 gigabyte version is $179 and the 64 gigabyte version is $199. These can be ordered on April 30th and will become available in the second half of May. So that was a run through of what was announced. Some great products, and if I was to get one of those, it would most probably be the iMac. It really is very impressive with that new design and the M1 chip. Which one would you choose? Were you surprised or disappointed by anything? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. It really does mean a lot to me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more. Peace.